The first skateboard started with wooden boxes, or boards, with roller skate wheels attached to the bottom. Crate scooters preceded skateboards, having a wooden crate attached to the nose on the front of the board, which formed rudimentary handlebars. The boxes turned into planks, similar to the skateboards you see today. Skateboarding as we know it was born in the late 1940s, when surfers in California wanted something to do when the waves were flat. This was called sidewalk surfing. No one knows exactly who made the first board. It seems several people came up with similar ideas from the late 1940s to the early 1950s. The first manufactured skateboards were ordered by a Los Angeles, California surf shop. Shop owner Bill Richard made a deal with the Chicago Roller Skate Company to produce a set of skate wheels and attach them to square wooden boards. By the 1960s, a small number of surfing manufacturers in Southern California started building skateboards that resembled small surfboards and assembled teams to promote their products. In the early 1970s, skate parks had not yet been invented, so skateboarders would gather in urban places like the Escondido Reservoir in San Diego, California. Some of the development concepts in the terrain of skate parks nowadays are actually taken directly from the Escondido Reservoir. Many companies started to manufacture trucks. You might think of these as axles, as they were specifically designed for skateboarding in 1976. As the equipment became more maneuverable, the decks started to get wider, reaching widths of 250 millimeters or 10 inches, or maybe even larger at times. This gave the rider much more control. Manufacturers started to experiment with more exotic composites and metals like fiberglass and aluminum, but most skateboards are made of a seven-ply hard rock Canadian maple veneer. Taking advantage of the emerging technologies and features, the vert trend emerged in skateboarding. With increased control, vert skaters could skate faster and perform more dangerous tricks. This did cause liability concerns and increased insurance costs to skate park owners. In the 1980s, skateboard companies were predominantly ran by skateboarders. The focus was initially on vert ramp skateboarding. Freestyle skating remained very healthy throughout this period, though. The influence that freestyle exerted upon street skating became apparent during the mid-1980s, forcing a rapid evolution to accommodate street skaters. Since few skate parks were still yet available, people would look for shopping centers as well as public and private property as their spot to skate. During this period, numerous skateboarders, as well as companies in the industry, paid tribute to the scenes of Marty McFly skateboarding in the film Back to the Future for its influence. Many professional skateboarders cite the film as an initiation into the action sport. Tony Hawk said there's plenty of legendary pros that I personally know who started skating because they saw that film. Skateboarding during the 1990s became dominated by street skateboarding. Boards made during this time were about 7 and a quarter inches to 8 inches, 180 to 200 millimeters wide, and 30 to 32 inches, 760 to 810 millimeters long. At this time, the wheels for the boards were made of extremely hard polyurethane, and they were very small. It helped make tricks much more manageable. Board styles have changed dramatically since the 70s, but they've remained mostly the same since the mid-1990s. The contemporary shape of the skateboard is derived from the freestyle boards of the 1980s. They have a very symmetrical shape and a narrow width. By 2001, skateboarding gained so much popularity, more American people under the age of 18 rode skateboards than actually played baseball. Skateboarding and skate parks actually became a complement to academic lessons in schools, including new non-traditional physical education programs. By 2006, there were over 2,400 skate parks worldwide. The design of skate parks improved very fast, and some skaters became park designers. In 2009, Skate Lab opened the Skateboarding Hall of Fame and Skateboard Museum. During the 2010s, electric skateboards emerged, as well as numerous on- and off-road new tech decks. That's a story for another time, though. Skateboarding made its way into Olympic debut in the summer of 2020 at the Olympics in Tokyo, both men's and women's events. So from the hills of Laguna Beach with high red curbs to the streets of Mumbai, People across the globe will continue to ride for the fun of the ride, for the competition, and they can now strive for gold in the Olympics. These are interesting things with JC.